Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFP25 video. And in today's video, I'm just showing you guys how stack caps work in Dynasty mode. And of course, before we do get into the video, guys, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Every like helps the channel out. And of course, if you're new, subscribe. The road to 30,000 has begun. I'd love to hit 100K someday, but 30,000 would be a nice start. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below. And if you haven't already, my Twitter and underdog link will be down below. Make sure to follow me over on Twitter. It's a great place. A lot of people have been asking for dynasty advice sending me pictures to rate their dynasty make sure to follow me over there and reach out if you need anything all right so what are stack caps right so just i'm gonna start showing you guys how to get there because i've got a lot of questions of people asking me how i get to some of these places so i do want to showcase that a little bit so you want to come over to view roster and come over to your player when you're in roster hover over any player that you want to check out and you're going to click y and or triangle so this could work for anybody so i'm going to start with my wide receiver jelani watkins and kind of show you what i'm looking at here so click on wire triangle and you come over here to ratings, you'll see these are stack caps. If you look at those grayed out boxes with the line through them, those are what stack caps are. Now, for you that don't know stack caps, that pretty much tells you that that player can't reach that point. So for instance, his route running could almost get to the top tier. He just can't get to the last one. So he can be a great route runner. He just can't be an amazing one, right? Hands can be maxed. He could be a great catcher. That's fine. Elusiveness, not power. This is one of those big stack caps on him, right? So he cannot get his power that high, which makes sense. He's a skinny, fast wide receiver. That's fine. That's not really in his play style. So you're gonna notice that some of these stack caps are really relevant and some aren't. And that's why it's so important to understand how these work. For instance, as a shifty, fast wide receiver, power is not really gonna impact his overall too much. So it's not something I'm too worried about and his toughness is already high. None of those things really matter. What you want to improve a wide receiver's overall, and this is really about showing potential. That's what you wanna keep in mind. There, these stat caps give you a glimpse at what their potential as a player could be. So just to preface all this, let's say Jelani Watkins had route running with three stat, three or four stat caps and he could only get one more box. And let's say his hands had four boxes stat capped off. That essentially means Jelani Watkins would never get higher than like a mid 80, low 80 overall because all of his key attribute stats are capped. In this instance, only his power is capped and that's probably the least relevant thing for improving a wide receiver's overall. So honestly, this guy has the potential to get up to 95, 99 plus, right? In that range. So with that being said, you understand how that works. I'm gonna show you guys some more examples of how this doesn't work for other players. We're on the Marshall team, and I'm gonna show you this one because you wanna be looking at two and three stars. And the reason I wanna go through this, so a lot of people have been commenting how two stars and three star gems and some of these other are the best players to recruit. You don't need the five stars. While gems are great and they can increase a lot, I think some people are mistaking big overall jumps for actual high overalls. So for instance, let's say you have a two star gem, but they're in the 60 overall range. Yeah, they may jump 10 overalls, but it's still only a 70. That's still not a usable player on a lot of teams, right? Or at least on top tier teams. So with that being said, keep in mind that starting overall is very important for where you're going to kind of reach in your career in a lot of aspects. And people aren't keeping in mind their stat cap. So let's just say you think that that jumps huge. They may be closer to their potential and capping out than you may know. So if you look at this Foster cornerback here on Marshall, you click Y on him and you come on over to ratings, you'll notice that his stat caps are a little different, right? So his zone coverage is capped off by two. So that limits his top tier potential right off the rip. Not, th not saying he's not going to be a great zone corner, but that does hurt. Now, this would be fine if his man coverage wasn't that cap, but his man coverage is capped too. So this essentially means he'll never be a mid 90s player. He'll probably always be at max in 80s at best because he can't become high 90s at anything that he's supposed to have as a corner. Not to mention his hands are very low. His power is okay. And his run stopping is not great. Again, run stopping, not the most important thing, but these are enough caps to tell you that this player will never be an elite type player. Now, this is so important to take a look. Through. You're going to want to go through your roster and take a look at every single position that you care about that you want to develop, especially when you get a new recruit class. I highly recommend you come over to ratings and you take a look at this while going through this. You'll see here, Jacoby Henderson, you can kind of tie this to their stars. This was a two star player. He doesn't have the highest ceiling and that's where the stars start to come into a play here. So his, all of his stats have major caps on them. So basically these are guys, in my opinion, that you don't want to make an emphasis to develop. These are guys that I'm not really too worried about redshirting. If it's a guy with a lot of stack caps, I'm probably just going to let them be a rotational backup guys because I'm not worried about them. The guys with the high stack caps, right? Coming back over to LSU and coming back over to other teams. These are teams that essentially get a lot more four and five stars. So you'll kind of see this across the board. Let's look at a guy like Harold Perkins to show you guys a top tier player. He's already almost maxed out. You can kind of see what their potential is like. So Harold Perkins at a 94 overall, pretty much as high as you can go, has basically no caps. This tells you that if you have a Heisman type season, and people have been commenting on this as well, oh, you know, stats don't matter, trophies don't matter. They do because it gets you skill points. 
and then your player will automatically use those so that does help especially with top tier players these high 90 overall players aren't going to progress with huge jumps when they're already in their junior senior season right so you kind of need the skill points as a way to finish it but harold perkins could easily get to a 99 because he has almost no caps he's a player that has elite potential and this is where you'll see the dev trait doesn't tie into that and this is where it all comes together eventually i'm going to make a master guide going over my progression guide all putting everything together but if you look here development trait star you would think that elite would have better so here's the here's the thing to note here development trait star means they develop at a faster rate than impact which means that they get more skill points at a faster rate than an impact player elite players get them even faster but just because they earn them faster that doesn't mean their ceilings as high so an elite player may develop faster into their capped ceiling of an 85. a star player like harold perkins may develop slightly slower into their ceiling of a 99. so pretty much caps allow you to see what a player's future can be so it's so important when you get that rookie recruit class those freshmen coming in always take a look at who you have because it'll give you an idea so let's just say you come over to i believe it's left outside linebacker singleton this is a guy that i wasn't sure about he's a freshman he's 88 speed you might be sit sitting there off rip thinking 88 speed i want to build him or he's a 76 overall i'm not sure so you click on him and you come over to ratings and when you look at him you notice that his skill caps are pretty open-ended here his pass coverage could get out maxed as a pass coverage linebacker so when you look at his archetype he's a pass coverage linebacker that's his main thing you can get that maxed out which means he could be an elite pass covered guy and everything else is basically almost uncapped near the top tier which means he could easily become a low 90 overall linebacker so in my eyes that's a guy that i'm either red shirting and or playing now that really depends on how you build guys and what positions you can build but in my eyes that's a buildable player and i think that's a lot of things that people have been misunderstanding with how development works they've been misconstruing how dev traits plus their ceiling works so that's why i'm putting it all together here and you can just do this for your whole roster come on through and just take a look i recommend doing this for freshmen and maybe sophomore by the time they're junior and seniors you kind of you're not probably redshirting them you're probably just playing them there's not really much of a way to kind of build them from there another guy here is shelton sampson he's a 95 speed wide receiver freshman redshirt a guy that i look at six to four i want to build right come take a look at him he's not capped at all this guy has unlimited potential he technically has a higher ceiling than jelani watkins the only difference is he's already a redshirt freshman so jelani watkins technically has more time because he still has the redshirt opportunity and he just is a freshman i believe freshmen have a better dev chance jump up chance i should say as a pure true freshman but this is the best way to do it so i cannot i cannot stress this enough make sure you're looking at stat caps if you have any questions about stat caps and some other stuff i know it's pretty complicated there's a lot of variables in this make sure to let me know down below but make sure you're doing this i cannot stress this enough for every recruit class you have you're gonna see sometimes i've seen guys get these three-star quarterback gems they have 95 speed they have 95 throw power they're like this guy's the future and what you don't realize is when you click on them and you and you or sorry i should say when you sim you build right you go through two or three seasons and people are commenting he's a junior he had elite dev he's only 83 overall well yeah he's elite dev he got there really quickly but his caps were 83 they can never get higher now on the flip side this works another way Let's say you have a quarterback with like 89 throw power and 88 speed and you're like oh that's pretty solid i could probably get that throw power into the 90s i could probably get that speed up a little bit but then you click on their caps right and you realize that their throw power is max so let's look at colin hurley right here a guy with quite a few caps this was a guy coming into lsu as a freshman that i was like before the game came out i'm gonna try to build this guy he's got three stars he's got impact dev he's decently fast he's got some throw power okay this is the guy i could build but when you look close at him he has a lot of caps this is not a guy that's going to be a mid high 90s quarterback he's probably going to cap in his high 80s at best and that's not an elite quarterback that's an okay quarterback so for me that tells me as a program builder i need to emphasize recruiting a quarterback if i want to improve lsu's future and that's what you have to look at because you do, you want elite players you want high ceiling always you don't want to be building normal dev players and you especially don't want to be building players with low caps because even if you give them all four years you're going to come to junior senior year you're going to be disappointed about it you're going to say why did i why did i build this guy this guy was supposed to be an elite dev he was supposed to be elite but that's not always the case because their caps will hinder them but to sum it all up the variables to consider look at their starting overall look at their year freshman right or sophomore look at their development trait and then look at their stat caps you want to sit there and you could pretty much project all their ceilings out if i had to give you guys a rough baseline a guy with quite a few stat caps like this probably only gets to mid high 80s a guy with only a few stack caps like one or twos across the board probably can get to the 90s a guy with only one on the end can probably get to like 93 95 a guy with none or one probably can get to 99 the only thing to keep in mind here is like i said some things don't impact ability that much such as like health right if health had like really bad stack caps like four off 
all you can think of is he probably will get more likely to get injured but it won't affect his overall but like if his power elusiveness accuracy iq and quickness are all uncapped but his health is like five capped that's still a guy that can get to 99 so it is a little circumstantial in the sense that you have to understand by playing this game and understanding what matters so a quarterback what matters accuracy awareness right those are always the two biggest things if the other stuff's capped it's not going to really hinder their overall although a quarterback with really bad toughness is going to be rough because they take a lot of hits they get sacked a rushing quarterback especially so you want to keep all these variables in mind but if you keep all those in mind again notepad on the iphone notepad on the android notepad on the computer always break it down write your player down write their dev trait write how many caps they have and then kind of assess like on a score of this guy has maximum potential this guy does not that's going to be the best way to keep doing this and we can do is after every season you can start to force transfers out force out those guys with the stack caps that you don't need the guys that are like especially like a quarterback you're only starting one maybe a backup force those guys out keep bringing in you guys with high ceilings eventually you can start to slowly net your entire team full of high ceiling high stack cap high depth guys and now your program's rolling kind of like a bama like a georgia every year they're just a new studs that come in behind them instead of losing a stud and now having a low ceiling guy right but yeah that's about it for that so understanding your stack caps is the best advice i can give you guys in this video one of the best advice I could probably offer thus far. I feel like a lot of people don't understand stat caps yet, and I really hope this video does a great job explaining that for you. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I hope this covered everything on stat caps. If you already watched and you enjoyed it, make sure to give this a big thumbs up. Helps the video out a lot. Subscribe if you're new. Road to 30K, like I mentioned. Hopefully 100K at some point. And yeah, comment down below. Hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.